another video guys. Uh, today, doing something a little bit different. I wanted to kind of do an in-depth-ish review um, on this KMG TX grinder. I get a lot, a lot of questions about what grinder I'm using, if I like it, if I don't like it and all that stuff. And when I was researching which grinder I wanted to go with, um, there wasn't really much as far as videos go on reviews after somebody's used this grinder for a while. So I thought it would be helpful maybe for some people that uh, are in the market for a new grinder um, to talk about this one a little bit and explain what I like and what I don't like about it. And uh, maybe it'll help you guys because uh, there's so many grinders right now um, out there and there's a lot of really good ones. So it's hard to kind of narrow down what you want and kind of make a decision. So I've owned this grinder now for about a year and, I, and I'm a full-time knife maker. Um, I use it every single day. So I've definitely put it through the paces and um, really got to understand what I like about it. And kind of when you step up to this kind of grinder, which I would say it's like a high-end grinder, uh, kind of the benefits of it, which I didn't fully understand um, maybe a couple years ago. So again, this is the KMG TX grinder made by Beaumont Metalworks. Uh, this is their tilting version. So you can see it goes vertical and horizontal just with that little lever there. Um, this one I purchased as their, I think it's kind of their base level kit, which it comes with a two horsepower um, motor that's either you can run it on 110 or 220 and I have it wired for 110 right now. Um, it also comes with that, let's see, you can see it in the video, a really nice speed controller. So there's a little bracket here that you guys maybe can see bolts to the back, comes down and you can mount it wherever you want. Um, it's a super good package deal when you buy it. Uh, it comes with, I believe it comes with the single tool arm. It comes with this flat platen. Uh, and then it also comes with just a kind of small, very basic work rest. And it just slides in like this kind of, at least that's how I do it. You can do it from the bottom as well. Um, and then I, after I bought this, it's kind of dusty because I don't use it a ton, but I purchased their um, articulating work rest as well, which I think this thing to add this is about 300 bucks right around there um and if you're it's very handy for specific things i guess let's put it that way um you don't necessarily need it right away um i use it for when i have it set up like this and i have my small wheel attachment and i'll just show you guys really quick just to kind of show you how this whole thing works how smooth it is um, so if I have my small wheel attachment like this then that articulating work rest comes in actually this one has to go over here and then this comes in like this hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing and then that's you can kind of see it like that so that's what the work rest I use if I'm using those small wheel attachments so it's something that is very handy to have, uh, but not super necessary right off the bat if you are uh, kind of looking to spend the kind of money that you're going to have to spend on one of these grinders, which I know it's a big investment, but it's well worth it in the long run. So like I said, I've been running this grinder for about a year now, and I have had absolutely zero issues with it. I haven't had to replace anything. Nothing's been funny with it. Everything has been perfect. Um, and, and so there's a lot to say about that. So I'm not gonna name drop any other grinders. The grinder I used beforehand, before I got this one, um, I had some issues with it and the customer service was horrible. But um, with this, these guys are awesome to work with. Like when I ordered that tool rest, they were really nice, just really good, uh, old school kind of good company to deal with, which there's a lot to say for that. Um, the other thing that I really liked about this grinder and why I actually ended up going with it is if you guys are doing any research right now on what grinder to go with, there's a lot of companies that 
will sell you a full grinder, but when you get it, you actually have to assemble it and sometimes paint it. And so it just comes like raw steel and you paint it or powder coat it, assemble it, all that stuff. And maybe they're a little bit cheaper. Like, again, I'm not gonna name drop any companies because uh, I don't think that's the right thing to do, but I just looked one up and to basically get this same kit from a different company, um, it was $2,600 and I don't know if that includes shipping or not, but it was a two horse, two horsepower, you know, VFD, uh, articulating everything, vertical, horizontal, and it was about 2,600 bucks. This one, like I said, I think right now you can get it for about three grand. Okay. And it comes fully powder coated, assembled, which is nice. And what's really cool about these and maybe some other companies do it as well, but when they build these, they literally build them, put them together, and, and even put a belt on them and run them and make sure that everything's perfect. So when you get this thing from KMG, you literally have to plug your wires into your VFD, mount it to your bench, and you're good to go. So, I mean, I'm a pretty hands-on guy. I'm cool putting stuff together and everything, but when you're spending that kind of money, it sure would be, it sure is nice to just get it, plug it in, and you can start grinding in about 15 minutes. Um, so without kind of zooming in on anything, you guys can probably see this. This is all half-inch steel construction. Uh, I believe they use a, a powder coat on it. It feels kind of like powder coat. Um, it's just super heavy, super beefy, and in turn, it makes it really operate smooth. Obviously, all the tracking is perfect on it as well, which helps. But having that really solid base, and that's something that that other grinder that I used beforehand, you know, it was maybe made out of quarter-inch plate or something like that. Um, a couple of the cool features on this grinder that are unique to the TX is the tool arm locking mechanism, I guess I'm going to call it. So it has these knobs right here that you can see. And as opposed to some grinders that you turn these knobs and this actual bolt goes through and hits your tool arm and locks it in place, which works fine, but over time it actually puts a groove in your tool arm um, and it'll wear out and you gotta buy new tool arms. What they did is they cut out this little slot and it actually push it, pushes pressure on this plate and holds it in that way. So it doesn't cause any damage to your tool arms and it holds it really solid, which is, it's one of those features that's kind of cool that I don't know if anybody else is doing it and they came up with it and it's awesome. The tracking mechanism is all very unique for them too. This has some special tracking mechanism that I'm not even gonna get into because I'm not smart enough to explain it, but the tracking is flawless on this grinder. It's so precise and so perfect. Um, absolutely no complaints there. So like I said before, I have this wired at 110, um, mainly just because I've got my shop heater and my even heat are on 220 and I didn't have another 220 bolt. Uh, I wasn't able to run another 220 bolt outlet over here. So I'm running it at 110 and overall, I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I guess you could always bump it up to 220, but I you can hog steel with this really well. It doesn't bog down, um, you know, the 110 works really well for me. No issues whatsoever. Um, I think as far as the general construction and everything of it, that kind of covers it. It's a super heavy duty, beefy machine, industrial quality, I would almost say, um, that nothing has worn down in the year of me using it, that nothing shows any signs of wear. All the wheels are good, the bearings are good. Everything about it is just super impressive. Um, it's got this one, you just, obviously this locks it in so you can't move it. You loosen this little knob, you push up on this, and then you instantly go into horizontal. So super fast, super easy, which is really nice. Um, I pretty much, I think I said in the beginning of this video, I was gonna talk about the pros and cons. You know, there pretty much isn't any cons. The only thing, it's funny, this is the simplest thing that maybe they've overlooked a little bit, but it's not a big deal at all, is when you, here, I'll show you really quick. So if you, uh, say you put your belt on, and I guess this shows really good too how nice the, uh, 
you lock that in, okay, then you're tight. That's that's the other thing, that belt tension system is really cool. I should probably show that and talk about it a little bit. Now, when you go to change your belt, okay, so right now it's really tight, you have to take your hand and pop this little bracket, okay? You guys can see it, I think, right there. So there's quite a bit of pressure on there, and it kind of digs into your hand a little bit. And I'm not like a sissy or anything, it's not a big deal, but if they would have made this like maybe a little wider and cupped it a little bit, to kind of fit your palm, that would be really cool. And maybe in the future they could do something like that. You know, I don't know. But anyways, that's one little thing that's like an always, especially if you're doing multiple batches and nights where you're switching between belts a lot, it gets where it's like, man, I wish that was a little different, but no big deal at all. Um, the other thing that I really wanted to show you guys about this grinder is their, uh, system for tensioning the belts which is super unique um, and I'll actually bring the camera in right now to show it a little bit better okay so as you guys can see the tension system on this it doesn't use a gas strut or anything like that it uses this ratcheting system that actually pops this and it's got these little teeth okay so you set it in it's locked in and then it holds tension like that. Let me put a belt on and show you guys again. So my old grinder had a gas strut system and in a matter of using it for a year, those gas struts wear out fast. So I had to replace the gas struts, the tracking was off, I had issues with tension. Um, with this, you basically, I mean, there's probably different ways to do this. This is how I do it. I get it loose, I take my hand, pop it up, you got your tension, you're good to go. So those right, those teeth just grab on. And when I first got this grinder, you kind of look at it and it's their engineering on this is really amazing because you'd think those teeth would wear a little bit doing that. And they, they look absolutely brand new still. Now I'm looking at it again. It's really impressive. They look great. And you've always got that same lock it up, good tension. I mean, it's really impressive how well that works. There you can see the tracking wheel. It's got a really nice knurled knob on it. This is a really nice piece of like uh, billet aluminum for that handle. Everything about this thing is just really, really nice. Um, really thick, beefy, heavy duty, heavy duty. I need to make sure you guys know this thing is heavy duty. So I think that uh, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about with this grinder. But again, I don't quote me on the prices or anything because I, I think when I purchased this, it was about $3,000, okay? I don't know how much the price has changed on these or any other grinders, um, but it's definitely the top dog as far as grinders go, in my opinion. Um, I wish I had three of them, but I don't. Um, there's absolutely nothing, no issues at all with this thing so far. Um, I've ran it for a year everything smooth as butter and works great and uh the only problem is i wish i had more of them so if you guys are in the market for a grinder make sure you do your research figure out what you need and what you want to do with this um i make knives full time you know your grinder is pretty much your number one tool between that and a heat treat oven you know how many times i turn this on and off and on and off change belts every single day you want a tool that will last and won't wear out. So there's obviously a lot cheaper options, uh, but if you want to make knives, even as a hobby and you want to do it and just know that you've got the right tool for the job, um, this is definitely one you guys should look at. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description to this grinder. Um, that way you guys can go check it out and actually look at the technical specs on it and stuff because I didn't really cover much of that. But I just wanted to kind of explain what I like about it, some of the cool features. Um, and I think, I think I covered everything. I'm not positive, but if you guys have any questions for me, drop them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them as good as I can. Um, I just have been getting a lot of questions lately on, on this grinder and kind of what grinder I would recommend to people. And if, like I said, if you guys are planning on making knives or 
just need a grinder for whatever else. And it's maybe a little bit more than a hobby, a little side hustle, whatever it is. Definitely look into the Cam GTX. I can't recommend it enough. And um, I hope this video helped you guys a little bit. I think I covered everything. I'll go ahead and fire it up and show you guys really quick. Because that was one thing that I had people ask about. Um, I'll fire it up. I'll change the camera a little bit and just show you guys the speeds and everything like that right now. Okay, so I just have an old worn out belt on there right now. But uh, you can see it's got kind of a main power switch that gives the whole unit power. You could just hear it kick on. Uh, this is obviously your speed controller and it's got this is your on switch. So it's got kind of a halfway point there, not 100% positive why. And then you kick it up to turn it on. The one thing that I'm not positive about that I'm going to have to talk to them about is if you can add a reversing switch because it has it in this VFD. Um, I'm not positive what it takes to add reverse to this machine, but it would be something that would be really cool, mainly for sharpening is what I was thinking about. But uh, anyways, so you got your speed. I'll kick it off slow. I'll crank it up for you guys and show you guys kind of how it reacts and everything. And uh, maybe take the camera and show you the tracking as well, just because that's important. So we're going to kick it on. There you can see it's about as slow as it can go. Let me Let me move the camera for you guys and show you guys real quick. All right, that's, let me see, I'm going to kick it as slow as it can possibly go. Right there. Man, that's slow. We'll kick it up a little bit. You can see the reaction's really good, really fast. There we're at about 90% power. I'll show you the tracking. And there you go. All right, well, guys, I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to talk about. I, uh, if you have any questions about this, like I said, drop them in the comments. I uh, kind of had a few bullet points in my head I wanted to cover on this grinder. I might have missed something, but that kind of gives you the basics. And uh, I guess, like I said, budget's important, obviously, but... If you're looking at these high-end grinders and you're looking at all these ones that come unfinished, unpainted, eh, you know, my opinion is just step up, get one that's ready to rock and roll. You know it's perfect right out of the box. And uh, the Cam GTX is awesome. So hope you guys liked the video. Uh, make sure you like it. Subscribe to the channel for more. I do a lot of how-tos and stuff like that. Um, but thanks for checking it out, guys.